Oh God, we just thank you that you love us, Father. God, that your presence is here in this room. God, that no matter how how we came in here, God, we don't have to we don't have to leave the same because you you are the one that intervenes, Father. You're the one that that, that heals the broken hearts, Father God. You're the one that wins the battles. You're the one that that's in the middle of every situation in our life. And God, we just pray today as we come in and we worship you. You'd speak to us in a fresh way, Father God. That as we head into this this new year, that you'd you'd be right there with us. God, that you begin to speak words over us into the new year. We love you today, Father, and we give you all the honor and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You can grab your seat wherever you are. So good to have you in church this morning. Great to have you in church. So um, so good to be gathering around on the first week of December. Who's been handling the heat okay? I've noticed it's been getting even hotter again. Just when I thought it couldn't get any hotter. Um, so I'm struggling a little bit, but it's all right. We'll get there. Um, it was an amazing time yesterday. Uh, we, had, we had a bunch of us. Uh, we, we went over to our, our new land, um, and we got, we got the opportunity to start doing some renovations around there. So it was, that was an amazing time together uh, yesterday. Uh, painting walls, digging out trees. All the fun stuff that uh, no one particularly likes to do, but we did it, and um, it was a, it was a great time together. Um, we're going to come around tithes and offerings this morning, and I want to do a little bit of an illustration with you. But I'll read I'll read our verse, uh, Luke six thirty eight. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return uh, return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. I I noticed this in my life is that uh, there's been times when Let's call this. Let's call this our tithes and offerings bucket, and I kind of just go, well, I'll just chuck, I'll just kind of chuck it in there because that's the right thing to do, and I'll, I'll do my tithes and offerings, and I'll just put bit after bit in. But what if when we did tithes and offerings, I go, no, I'm actually giving in faith over my family, over my house deposit, over my over my car loan, over over my business over my job. I'm actually giving in faith to all of those things. And God actually sees that faith that we give in faith to what's important to us. God says, I'll take that. I'll take what what you've given in faith and I'll actually press it down, shake together, overflowing a blessing far more than what you and I could ever acknowledge. Because God loves us way too much to leave us where we are that our blessings actually start to run over and play over. Uh, but let's be giving in faith today, believing that God can do far more than what you and I could ever do. He's the one that's in the middle of everything that goes on in our financial situations. And so when we give in faith, we're not just throwing in loose change. We're saying, God, I'm trusting you with every situation in my life. I'm giving in faith over my family, over my job, over my business, believing that you can do far more than what I could ever do on my own. So if you do want to give with us today, uh, you can give on our app. If you don't have our app yet, I think we have a slide. We might not. Yeah, I've spoken too soon. That's good. Um, but there is a box down the back. If you do want to get our My City Church app, um, come to me after the service. I'd love to help you get that and get it downloaded. Um, but why don't we pray this morning? Father, we just uh, we just thank you uh, that you love us, Father God. You love us to, um, so much, Father, that your, your hand is upon our financial situations, God. That you know that every uh, everything that's going on, and you're, you're even working before we even know it, Father God. You've gone before us. Uh, you've won the battle already. God, we love you and we want to give him faith today, believing that you can do far more. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hey, uh, I'm going to invite up Haley Dennis this morning. She's going to come and share with us around what's happening uh, for Carols on the Lawn. Why don't you make her welcome? Thanks, Lockie. Uh, good morning, church. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Haley, and our family has been coming to My City Church for a number of years now. During that time, we've heard and seen this vision of owning our own land. In recent weeks, that land and that vision has become ours at number one Canoe Point Road, Tannum Sands. God really spoke to me about the significance of that address and the number one. God's number one priority is for us to become one with Him. Number one also signifies unity and new beginnings. So it is with good excite, great excitement, not just good excitement, that I am here to uh, tell you all about our first official public event at our new land. Yeah. 
So we have our carol service coming up on the 24th of December at 6 p.m. There'll be um, kids lolly hunt, sausage sizzle. Um, there'll be carols and a short service afterwards. Um, so bring your chairs, bring your blankets, bring mozzie spray. Do not forget that. Um, and we hope to see you all there. And just one other thing, um, church, maybe if there's that one person that you can think of, or maybe five, um, that might be looking for that new beginning with God, this might be a great opportunity to invite them along. See you all there. Uh, you'll find a flyer on your on your seat there. Maybe give it to someone you know. Uh, say, hey, why don't you come along to uh, Carol the Lawn with me? It'd be great to have you along. Hey, we're going to come around the Word of God today, and we've got the pleasure and privilege of starting our new series today, and uh, led by not only, uh, by one and only, Pastor Anthony. Uh, so why don't you make him feel welcome this morning as he comes up, let's honor the Word of God. Awesome. awesome. Hey, so great to be here with you this morning. Uh, we're starting a new series entitled The Greatest Gift. The Greatest Gift. There is modeling dough up here. I noticed Lockie chose the home brand version modeling dough. That would never fly in our house. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, the greatest gift. Um, I, I was talking to my daughter last night, as, um, as you do when you're putting them to bed, and uh, we, we just got this new, um, on the Bible app, there's this thing now called Kids Bible Experience, um, and I'm just loving it. It's like a, almost like TikTok um, for kids, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm so old. I don't know this stuff. Um, it's good anyway, and it's a series of videos. And we were talking last night, or the videos last night uh, were out of Colossians. And in the, in the book of Colossians, it says, um, this great mystery, Christ in us. And so it started this um, existential discussion with a nine-year-old um, about the theology of what that means. And so we're having this discussion about whether it means that Christ physically lives in us. Like if a doctor or a scientist could get a, a powerful enough microscope, uh, does Christ live in us on a, on a subatomic level? Or, or is it that if you had the right x-ray, you'd be able to view the spot where Christ actually lives in us? Or, or is it the case that, uh, that Christ is actually in the fourth dimension, in another dimension that we can't see with our human eyes? And so it was a great conversation to have with a nine-year-old um, about this theology and existential discussion over what it actually means, the mystery of Christ living in us. And, and it's kind of like that with the greatest gift. Like, of course, on one level, we realize that Jesus is the gift. Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, but as you start to dig it down, it's like, well, obviously, that's the case. Obviously, we realize that Christ lives in us. But not so much, the mystery is not so much the what, but the mystery is the why or the how. How does Christ live in us? Uh, the mystery is not so much the fact that Jesus is the reason for the season and, and Jesus is the greatest gift. But I guess the mystery is why. The mystery is how. Uh, the mystery is what does that mean for us living in 2020 that Jesus is the greatest gift. Um, and so I thought this morning, because I'm doing the first one, it means that I can pick the easiest scriptures. Um, that's what it means. And so I, I thought, why don't we start right back um, at the beginning of the Gospels. And if you don't know where the Gospels are or what the Gospels are, the Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, gospel literally means good news, good news. And so there's these four writers who go, let's give the good news of Jesus, the, the just pre-birth, birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, but let's give it in our version of events. And so you've got four different writers who write in four different ways. You've got Matthew, and Matthew is writing to the Jews. Uh, Matthew, if you read the book of Matthew, you'll notice a lot of things like, um, this happened to fulfill the scriptures spoken about Jesus, such and such. If you read the book of Matthew, it'll speak a lot more about Jesus as a Messiah, uh, Jesus as uh, the answer to the prophetic word that was spoken. And that's because Matthew is writing to the Jewish people about the Jewish Messiah. And then you got the book of Mark, and Mark was written uh, by a man to the Gentiles, all the non-Jews. That would probably be the majority of us. And Mark is writing to the non-Jews about who this Jesus is. And he was writing to Christians who maybe lived in Rome or different places who didn't understand. They understood that Jesus was Lord, but didn't quite understand the life of Jesus. And so when you read the book of Mark, you'll read a lot of like 
immediately. Then this happened. Bang, boom. He, he was like the action cut down version of the story of Jesus. And so the book of Mark is a great book to start in when you're trying to work out who this Jesus is and what Jesus was about. And then you got the book of Luke, which we'll leave for a moment. You go through to the book of John and John wrote differently. John was writing to a group of Christians who were being persecuted and killed. Uh, John was writing to a group of Christians who were maybe tomorrow facing death in a Colosseum. Uh, John was writing to a group of Christians who maybe tomorrow was their last day. Uh, John was writing to a group of Christians who maybe tomorrow were going to have their business forcibly removed from them. Uh, maybe tomorrow they were going to have their houses removed from them. Uh, maybe tomorrow they were going to face uh, death by sword or beheading or wild animal. Or if you're in Nero's time, maybe tomorrow you were going to be put up on a stake as a candle at one of Nero's dinner parties. Just fantastic. And so uh, when John writes to the Christians, you'll see John speaks a lot about who God was, who Jesus is, the Son of God, the hope of the world, because John was writing to a group of Christians that maybe this is their last day. And so what John is saying is, hey, even if you die today, there's a hope and there's a future. And so you'll read in the book of John, uh, there's the seven I am's. Uh, I am the bread of life. I am uh, the, the gate. I am the shepherd. I am, and because Jesus was saying that he is God because who he was writing to. But Luke, Luke is a little bit different. Uh, Luke was a doctor, and Luke was an investigative journalist. Uh, and so Luke didn't actually see firsthand what had happened. Luke instead, you'll read in the first part of Luke, Luke goes and gets eyewitness accounts. And so he goes and talks to as many people as he can to write up a story of, of what Jesus' life was, what Jesus' birth was, what Jesus' death and resurrection was. And uh, sorry, Luke was writing to one person, not a group of people. The book of Luke is not written to you. The book of Luke was written to a man named Theopolis. And uh, Theopolis was the leader of the town of Antioch. And Theopolis probably, most scholars would say, uh, Theopolis was not a Christian guy. And so Luke is writing to a man who maybe had only just heard about Jesus a little bit. And Luke was convincing Theopolis, you need to know Jesus. And I wonder this morning, I, I've been thinking about it during the week, what is it that I would write? If I was writing to one person, if I was talking to one person who had not grown up in Western society and had never heard about Jesus before, what is it that I would say? And how is it that I would do it? What would you say to someone? And how would you convince them that Jesus is who he says he is? The way that Luke starts is, Luke starts with, you know, niceties. Uh, the greatest Theopolis. I greet you in the name of Jesus. And then he tells this story of uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And Zechariah and Elizabeth, Zechariah is a priest, and Elizabeth is from a priestly line of people. And uh, they love God, and they love serving God. The only problem is they're now old, and they don't have any children. And we read uh, a, a statement, a line from Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says, I am full of disgrace. Well, she says the opposite. Spoiler alert, she's going to get pregnant. And she says, my disgrace has been removed. Because one day, uh, Luke writes that one day, Zechariah is in the temple of God performing his priestly duties. And it says this in verse 11 of chapter 1 of Luke. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He'll be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. I find it amazing that this is where Luke starts. Luke doesn't start with, uh, you know, everyone has sinned. Luke doesn't start with, God was angry. Uh, Luke doesn't start anywhere there. Luke starts with, God hears prayers. That's where Luke starts. Uh, Luke starts with God answers prayers. Uh, Luke starts with God wants to bring you your heart's delight. That's what it says. It, it says, you're going to have a son and you will call him, call him John. He'll be a great joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. Uh, Luke starts with a God who comes and brings angels. I, I love that fact. Out of everything Luke could have said to go, Jesus is God. 
Luke starts to speak about a personal God. Luke starts to speak about a God who would hear your prayers and hear your cries. Luke starts to speak about a God who cares about uh, what you care about. And I love that that's where Luke starts. It goes on in verse 24 and it says, After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he's shown his favor, shown his favor, and taken away my disgrace among the people. It goes on and says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. When Luke starts it, he starts by saying, The Lord is with people. I love this. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled as he, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. And the Lord's servant, Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you bear. Uh, but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy, Blessed is she who has believed the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Here we go. Here's four reasons. Four reasons why Jesus is the greatest gift. Uh, four things that Jesus brought with him when he came to earth. Here's number one. The coming of Jesus brings with him the favor and the blessing of God. When Luke begins to write the story of why it is Theopolis should come to know Jesus. He starts the story by saying in four, four times in the first chapter, favored. Four times in the first chapter, blessed. Uh, I love the fact that when Luke decides he's going to write to Theopolis about why Theopolis should know Jesus, he doesn't say just because you need forgiveness of your sins, which we do. He, he doesn't say uh, just because uh, God demands justice. He, he doesn't say, you know, you need to come to know Jesus uh, because, you know, otherwise Jesus will smoke you. He says everywhere where God goes, people are blessed. Everywhere where God goes, there's favor. Uh, it, it, just before Jesus came to be, the lead up to Jesus came with prayers being answered. The lead up to Jesus came with healing. The lead up to Jesus came with power. The lead up to Jesus came with favor and disgrace being lifted. When Luke writes to Theopolis, the amazing things that God has done, he starts off saying that those who know God have the favor of God and the blessing of God. I think we've got the greatest gift in us as Christians because everywhere we go, we carry with us the favor and blessing of God. I love the fact that when an angel comes to someone who doesn't know Jesus, he says, hey, you're favored of God, I want to introduce you to the one that will change the world. I love that we carry within us the fact that everywhere we go, we can introduce people to someone who wants to bring favor and blessing in their life. I love the fact that everywhere we go, we carry within us the one who answers prayers, the one who changes lives, the one who, who does good things. We sing the song, Good, Good Father, uh, because we carry within us a God who loves people, and wants to bless people. We carry the greatest gift not just because Jesus saves people from their sins, which he does, and it is amazing. We carry the greatest gift within us because everywhere we go, we carry a God who loves people and wants to favor and bless people. Second point. The coming of Jesus brings with him the impossible being made possible. 
I, I love this verse, verse 36. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. When Luke writes to Theophilus, one of the first things he says is, hey, there's a God who can make the impossible possible. One of the first things Luke says to Theophilus is there's a God who can make the inconceivable conceivable. There's a God who can make the improbable probable. There's a God who actually wants to answer prayers and actually wants to make impossibilities possible in the name of Jesus. I love the fact that what we carry within us, who we carry within us, makes the impossible possible. And that's, that's one of the reasons why Jesus is the greatest gift that we can actually take to our world, is the fact that everywhere we go and everything we say, every, every prayer we make, we actually have an opportunity to make the impossible become possible. I'm sure many of you would have heard that um, the story that Jess and I had, that when we, um, we got married, and just before we got married, we actually got the name of our first child. The name of our first child would mean God's promise. And then uh, after three years or so, we decided that, you know, who wouldn't want to have us as their parents? And so we should have a child. And so we tried to get pregnant, but nothing was happening. And so we go to the doctor and and the doctor sends us to an ultrasound. The ultrasound just does her thing. And she says, hey, just wanted to let you know, um, Jess has polycystic ovarian syndrome and she'll get less and less fertile until eventually she will not have children. And so uh, this was about this time. It was a week before Christmas. And so we get home, we got the scan, uh, the doctors are shut for Christmas, we take it home, we pray for it, pray over it, pray over Jess. Um, just after New Year's, go into the doctor, and the doctor looks at the exact same scan and says, everything is absolutely perfect. Uh, within three weeks, three weeks, three, three months, uh, Jess gets pregnant. Six weeks later, she says, hey, I think I just lost the baby. And we cried all night and prayed, and God spoke a word to us that everywhere the, the blood of the lamb is, no death will come. And so then, Aaliyah's now nine years old. And her name means God's promise because God is the God that makes the impossible possible. And that's who we serve, is a God who makes the impossible possible. And everywhere we go, we've got to know that we carry within us the greatest gift that mankind has ever known, a God who wants to make the impossible possible in the name of Jesus. Number three, the coming of Jesus brings with him the possibility of us being children of God. This is the classic. The coming of Jesus brings with him the possibility of us becoming children of God. Verse 77 of Luke chapter 1 says this, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Uh, John 1 verse 12. I, I love John 1 verse 12. It says this. It says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That the great exchange, the great gift that we have is Jesus, the Son of God, becomes the Son of Man. And us, the Son of Man, can become sons and daughters of the Most High God. We carry within us the greatest gift that humankind has ever known. The fact that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. But also the fact that everywhere we go and everything we do, we actually get the opportunity to allow other people to become sons and daughters of the Most High. Uh, the greatest day, the greatest day, obviously we've got great days in, in marriage and births and, and, and graduations and things that happen in our lives, but the greatest day was the day when we were adopted to be sons and daughters of the Most High. And that's what we carry within us, is not only that, but we also carry the ability and the responsibility to tell others this great gift that Jesus Christ loves them and has called them to be sons and daughters of the Most High. Here's point four, my last point, and it's that. The coming of Jesus brings with him the mandate to share the good news with others. Verse 76 on goes like this. It says, and you, my child, and this is talking about John the Baptist, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, and you will go on from uh, before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. 
We carry within us the greatest gift, uh, but one of the greatest gifts is actually a mandate upon our lives. We are mandated by God to share this good news with others. At the, the very beginning of this chapter, Luke is writing to Theopolis, saying, Theopolis, I need to let you know that the greatest gift that humankind could ever have is the person of Jesus. And each one of us carry within us the responsibility and mandate to share the good news with others. We're coming up to Christmas time. And, and what greater time uh, that people than, than now that we can share with people? Jesus. I, I reckon there's two times in the year when Christians actually uh, are given, not only, I, I think all year we've got the responsibility, but I think two times of the year we have permission from our city, from our nation to share the good news of Jesus. And it's Easter and it's Christmas. At Easter time and Christmas time, uh, we, we, I honestly believe we have permission to share. I, I believe that our city gives us permission to share. And, and I believe Easter and Christmas above every other week also. We have a responsibility and a mandate to share the greatest gift ever, the gift of Jesus. To tell people that uh, people who feel like they're disgraced, people who feel like they have no favor, people who feel like they have no blessing, that Jesus actually came to give them blessing and favor and remove their disgrace. We have a mandate and a responsibility to tell people who are facing impossible situations. Impossible situations. That, hey, you actually carry within you the answer to people's impossible situations. I, I honestly believe that you carry within you the answer to people's uh, marital issues. You carry within you the answer to people's uh, family issues. You carry within you the answer to people's uh, hurts and pains and depression. And, and if we could realize that as a church, that as those who carry Jesus, God, we actually have a responsibility to share this greatest gift with others. We actually have a responsibility that we be praying for the sick. We actually have a responsibility that we be praying for those who are destitute and hurting. Uh, the, the Word of God, uh, speaking about Jesus and Jesus speaking about Himself, says that um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to release the captive, to pronounce today is the day of the Lord's favor. And I believe that if we are calling ourselves Christians, little Christs, it's a hard word to say when you've got a list, little Christs. <laughs> if that's who we call ourselves, then we have a mandate and a responsibility to share with others that same thing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That we would declare the good news of God. That we would go and heal the brokenhearted. That we would go and declare today is the day of the Lord's favor. His Here's something we're going to do just before we finish. Why, why don't I invite the music team back on up? Here's what we're going to do. Four of the greatest gifts that we have at Christmas time. So we have a moment when God's favor and blessing is upon us. A moment when God removes disgrace. And so in a moment, in a moment we're going to pray for those who go, hey, I, I just, I don't feel favored. I don't feel blessed of God. We're going to pray for those who would go, hey, I feel disgraced. I feel ashamed. I feel convicted and oh, I feel condemned. And we're going to pray for that in just a moment. We're going to pray for people this morning who go, I'm facing an impossible situation. Maybe it's a health need or a family need. Uh, maybe it's a situation you're going through. Maybe it's a financial need. And we're going to pray for those who go, hey, I'm facing an impossible situation. Because we know a God who can turn impossible into possible. We're going to pray this morning, maybe there's some people here today who either uh, don't know God, have never known God, or, or maybe just for a long time. Maybe you'd say, hey, I once knew Jesus, but now I, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to pray because Jesus coming means that we can have the opportunity to have the great exchange where we can become children of God. And then we're going to pray that we as a church would take up the mandate that Jesus has given us to go and tell others the good news, that God's favor and blessing is upon them, that God is the God who can take the impossible and make it possible, that we would go out and we would tell people that they have an opportunity to become sons and daughters of the Most High, and that they too can share the good news of Jesus. So why don't we just all across this room, just for a moment, why don't you shut your eyes where you are? 
And Holy Spirit, we just invite you this morning. Holy Spirit, we just invite you this morning. Just touch hearts and lives. Holy Spirit, I, I just pray that right now you would just come in your grace and your goodness and your beauty and your love. And God, I just pray for those this morning that feel unblessed and unfavored and full of shame. Lord, for those who uh, maybe came in this morning carrying burdens, Lord God. And I just pray right now, God, I pray that uh, you would replace beauty for ashes. And Lord God, for those who have come in with sorrow, you'd replace it with joy. I pray, Lord, right now that people would know your favor and blessing is upon them, Lord God. Not based on circumstance, Lord. While Zechariah and Elizabeth were without children, you spoke a word that said they're favored. And so, Lord, not based on circumstances, not based on situation, based on truth. Lord, I, I speak against the lie that the enemy has told people, that they're unblessed and unfavored and disgraced. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, that mindsets would be broken, Lord God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that, um, uh, that right now people would know your favor and a blessing is upon them, Lord God. I pray against, Lord, words that have been spoken over them, Lord. And I speak your peace and your goodness, Lord. Your grace and your peace. I pray for those, Lord God, who have come here this morning and are facing an impossible situation. Come on, if you're facing something that's impossible, why don't you just lift your hands this morning? And God, we just pray for healing, for miracles, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord, for um, our families that are facing impossible situations. And I pray your grace and your healing, and your mercy and your goodness upon them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the God who is able... Lord, that your word says that no word from God will ever fail. And I pray, Lord, for those of us who have maybe let your dreams die, Lord God, because they're too hard, they're too impossible. It seems like it could never happen. And I pray, Lord, for a revival of the words of God over people's lives, Lord God, that the impossible would be made possible in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for those who feel far from you. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would just come back to know you, Lord. Lord, right now, we, we just give an opportunity for forgiveness of sins and stuff-ups and mistakes, Lord God. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that people would feel your peace. And I pray right now, Lord God, that people would once again just choose to follow you wholeheartedly, Lord God. Lord, a moment when people would come in from the cold, Lord, to know you once again. And Lord, I just pray. I pray right now, Lord God, that each one of us, Lord, would have in our hearts, Lord, a name of someone who you want us to reach out to and share the good news with, Lord, like, like Luke did with Theophilus, Lord. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would place upon us a commissioning and a mandate, Lord, to share your good news, Lord. Whether it's inviting someone to the carol service, Lord God, whether it's just sharing the love of Jesus, Lord, whether it's uh, telling someone at work that, hey, I'll be praying for you and I'll be believing for you and I'll be expecting God to move in that situation. Lord God, I pray for people in their, their houses, their families, their workplaces, Lord God. I pray for people at school that you give us opportunities, Lord God, boldness and courage to share this greatest gift that we carry within us with others all around us, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Hey, we're going to worship God again together. And um, can I just invite you as we worship God, if you're carrying something in your heart and you need to, to have someone pray, you'd like someone to pray with you, we follow, we follow a God of miracles. We follow a God who can make the impossible possible. And I, I just invite you, if you'd like some prayer during this worship, um, why don't you just come over this side here and we're going to have someone come and just pray.